Welcome to this month's EMBM Tech Show and boy have we got a treat for you today. We are going to be doing a pit walk here at the Malvins Classic and checking out all the e-bike tech. Okay, we just wandered past the privateer stand and this raw beauty has really caught my eye. This is the new E161 and it is two days off the press, right? Yep, built it Wednesday evening just before we left. To talk us through a uh, few of these features on this bike, it is, uh, say, full aluminium chassis, um, hunt wheels on it. What other specs have we got going on? Yep, so it's 161 mils of travel, just like our standard uh, 161. And then it's built around a 170 mil fork. And then, yeah, it's got the uh, e-enduro wheels, which is like built purely for e-bike use. They've got big, thick axles, steel axle, steel free hub body. They've even got little counter sunk bits in the hub just to draw away some of the heat. Spokes are also thicker, so they're triple butted, but just a bit thicker. Then the rim itself is a 37 mil rim, but it's based around our, our enduro wide rim, just a bit thicker, so it'd be really, really resistant to impact. Oh, and so this was built as a training tool for one of your enduro riders, right? Yeah. So just like the original 161 was built for Matt Stuttard and his EWS campaign, this was built for his uh, like off-season training, and he spends so much time. You can just get more runs in for a given time. Like he's a pretty busy guy, and he doesn't get to, you know, you just get more runs in, more elevation, and more training. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And last thing I want to talk about is going to be the release date of this and price. Have you got any idea of that yet? So fingers crossed, it's probably going to be about another year yet from release, just with supply chains being a bit crazy. And um, we're kind of hoping about five and a half to five seven. Nice looking bike. Well, thanks for joining us today. Cheers. Hey, Right, we've just come across to the 510 stand and I think I have found the ultimate shoe for e-mountain biking. Look at this thing, it just screams e-biking to me. This is Gore-Tex material all over the shoe, meaning that it's gonna keep your feet nice and dry. They actually claim the shoe to be actually waterproof, so your feet aren't even gonna get wet. At the front, you've got that nice reinforced toe box. Underneath, sticky rubber sole from 510. You're never gonna lose grip on the pedals. And at the top, you've got this ankle protection on the sides and of course, an elasticated collar. So anything that lands on your legs or is running down your legs is gonna get stopped before it enters the shoe. I mean, you don't have to stop and get all these bits of trail out of your shoe. I think for 150 pounds, this looks the absolute bomb. Okay, I'm here with George from Bike Stone. He's got some pretty neat solution for taking your bikes in the van and storing them either in your garage or at home. So let's take a look and a chat with the man himself. George, this looks uh, pretty neat in the back of this van. Talk us through this setup. Yeah, so this is our original bike rack. Um, mm -hmm. So we came up with this idea a few years ago uh, when we bought a van, so we're a big cycling family. We bought a van for taking our bikes, to and from events, races, mm -hmm. things like that. But quickly realized that was only half the problem solved. Yeah. You put the bikes in the back and they fall over. Mm -hmm. So my dad actually came up with the idea we have behind me, which is a foldable, simple bike rack that holds your bikes safely and securely in the back of a van. Mm -hmm. So if we have a closer look, in here we've got our four slot. It's holding two bikes at the moment. Like I said, it can fold up flat. There's two dog bones that raise up and the whole thing is hinged so it folds flat when you're not using it so you can store it out the way in the home. Yeah. It can hold from 26 up to 29 inch wheels, up to three inch in width for, for 27 and a half and 2.6 inch in width for 29 inch. We, we've got plenty of cu customers using them for e-bikes um, and mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we do up to a four slot version. We also do a two and a three. Nice. And what sort of prices are these coming in at? So the most expensive one, the four slot is 298. Mm -hmm. um, and the smallest one we do, the two slot, is around 180 pounds, I think. Nice. We changed the prices recently, so I can't quite okay, remember. Cool. But yeah. yeah, yeah. And here you've got a pretty neat solution to store in a bike in a garage or at home. It's yeah. like a, if you haven't got a wall hook, so exactly. talk us through this one. This so looks pretty interesting. This is our brand new prototype we've just launched this weekend. This is the Bike Stow Up. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a simple, elegant solution for, solution for holding a bike both horizontally and vertically. Yeah. So you drop the bike in and it's got this saddle or seat post cradle here which moves to different positions so depending on your bike geometry and size you can move that and it will hold the bike vertically. Yeah. So I came up with this idea living at uni for the past two years um, and needing a, a small compact way of holding my bike in my small room and I couldn't use a wall hook because I couldn't yeah, use the drilling, wall. Yeah. Um, so last summer I started working on this, mm -hmm. I've been working on it since then and happy yeah. to launch it today. Yeah. And this is just a prototype one, isn't it? Yeah. With the uh, production one, it has a Velcro strap, yeah. doesn't it? It goes from the down tube to the uh, exactly. front wheel just to hold it locked. So yeah, I think exactly, if you're yeah. struggling for those storage solutions, then these guys could 
definitely have the answer to your problems. Nice one, George. Thank you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Right, we're here at PT's with Martin Murray, who's a bit of a BMX and a mountain bike legend here in the UK. And there's some pretty cool uh, products here at PT's, including these amazing tubeless valves. I mean, colorway on these, Martin. Absolutely amazing. Talk us through the uh, specs on these things. Yeah, so these uh, PT's Mark II tubeless valves mm -hmm. are in 11 Chris King colorways. Nice. So they match up to anything any Chris King colorway on your bike yeah. very nicely. It's got a few unique features. Mm -hmm. um, they come with a they're 7075 aluminium, so you get a lifetime warranty, so you break it, yeah. replace it, no quibbles. Uh, they come with two different valve caps. So this one is a spoke key cap. Nice. So if you're out on the trail, yeah. you get a twig through your spoke, a bit of damage, you've got something that's gonna get you home. Bit of a life saver kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, so nice. it's 3.4 mm, fits yeah. pretty much every mountain bike. Yeah. And then the other cap, is um, a valve core removal cap. Right. So easy to work with, put your sealant in, pump the tires up. Yeah, yeah. They also got um, cross cut base, so they're compatible mm -hmm. with all rim inserts. Okay, cool. Um, and retail out 25 pounds. Nice. And obviously, water bottles are a bit of a nightmare on e bikes, aren't they? So you get pretty restricted by batteries, uh, motors, and all that sort of stuff. And you've got a pretty unique option over here, haven't you? What's well, it? The Fidlock bowl, right? Yeah, so we partnered with Fidlock for. Um, for their magnetic uh, water bottle. Mm -hmm. So what's unique about this is, this is your water bottle cage. Right. So really nice, slim, uh, when you don't have a bottle on your bike, yeah. make your bike looks quite mm -hmm. nice because it's really sleek. Yeah. And it's a magnetic system. So mm -hmm. magnet here, magnet here. Yeah. You put it close to it, it sucks it on. Nice. Release, release it, just yeah. turn it to the right. Yeah. And uh, we tested these for over a year. Mm -hmm. Steve tested them religiously. Yeah. We've never dropped a bottle never, over the no. roughest stuff, never dropped a bottle, so. Yeah, um, nice. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, so definitely, yeah, if you're into looking to save a bit of water bottle clearance on your bike, or some pimp valves, head over to PT's, loads of colors, and these amazing bottles. Nice, cheers, man. Cheers, cheers. Here at the Malvins, it's gonna be at the Mountain Mania tent. Now, these are one of the retailers for Simplon, one of the bikes we've already seen here on the channel, and this is Jamie, and he's gonna talk us through this pretty custom machine, right, Jamie? Yep. Yes, yeah, so this is the 2021 Rapcon P Max um, Bosch motor with a 625 watt hour battery. Yeah. Fully customizable spec on these. Uh, so, starting around about seven grand for a GX spec bike, yeah. you can have absolutely anything on it. Um, so, it comes with Fox options, Rock yeah. Shocks op options, yeah. SRAM gears, XT, DI2, yeah. you name it. You can have it mullet, 29er, any way which you want to go, really. Custom. And you mentioned about the battery on this bike, so it's got a 630 built into the down tube and there's an extender pack for this bike, right? Yeah, so there's a cradle that sits on the frame that allows you to either mount a bottle cage or you can mount a second battery. So you can have sort of 1200 watt hours of, of battery power from Bosch on there. So 1200, uh, 1200 watt hours of power, that's going to mean big days out. It's a great looking bike, the Simplon, a full carbon chassis, uh, and these builds start off at around £7,000. This bike is actually £8,000. Uh, loads of custom specs available on these, so check them out. All the details are going to be on their website. Let's go see what else we can find in the pits. Nice one, Jamie. A walk in the pits would not be complete without a stop with Hope Technology to check out all their latest tech. And this Mondraker Crafty RR is absolutely loaded with bling from Hope. You can Give us a quick chat through this. I mean, that Keox mount up top is the thing that's catching my eye. Uh, yeah, so this is quite a new part for us. Um, obviously, it's quite a common thing. Uh, these do break. Yeah. I'm sure people have had experience with that. So uh, naturally, we thought, yeah, we need to get one of those uh, CNC machines. So uh, available in six different colors, uh, really easy to mount, um, and it just kind of keeps out of the way. Yeah. Really solid as well, like really bomb proof. And of course you've got your uh, bar and stem on there as well, full carbon bar and the stem's obviously available in loads of different colours and uh, reach I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, so uh, the bars are made in-house, uh, we use uh, UK uh, woven carbon fibre, uh, obviously we do all the tooling moulds in-house as well, so uh, they're available in 31.8 and 35mm um, uh, and a standard uh, 20 mil rise with 800 wide width as well. Um, yeah, and stems, yeah, uh, we do a range of stems, loads of different sizes to kind of suit everyone's. Yeah, and obviously a big, uh, wider range of colours there as well. And brakes, what have we got on this machine? Looks like some big stoppers. Uh, yeah, so this is our uh, Tech 3 lever matched with the V4 uh, caliper, so maximum power. Uh, these are kind of suited towards sort of V-bikes, uh, downhill bikes, so you get plenty of bike with those, but you still get that hope 
uh, modulation with those as well. Nice, and moving down lower on the bike, we've also got that Hope chain set and chain ring. Tell us a bit about these cranks, because uh, you know, you do them from lots of different motors as well, don't you? Not just Bosch. Uh, yeah, so we do. I better get this correct. Um, we're working on Shimano. We're doing for Specialized and for Bosch. Uh, they're available in the standard kind of lengths, um, and we do six colours on those. They're machined uh, from a piece of um, forged aluminium, so um, yeah, really bomb-proof stuff. Really, a cranks are one of those things that kind of do take a lot of hammer. So uh, you know, it's worth kind of getting a decent set on there, and you'll feel the improvement on the trail as well. Yeah, I definitely heard a load of good stuff about your cranks. But I want to talk about these pedals. So should we nip over there and have a chat about those? Right, we have the Union pedal here from Hope and it's available in loads of different colors. Red, blues, purples, we've got it all going on. And of course, they've developed their own cleat design to be used in conjunction with this metal, metal? pedal. Tell us a bit more. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is our first uh, clipless pedal that we've designed in-house. Um, three different models. Uh, and like you said, the cleat system is our own and obviously, I know it's a big kind of um, you know thing for, for people to kind of understand. So we wanted to make the best possible clip pedal, uh, and we figure we need to start from the beginning, which is the cleat. Um, so yeah, it does use our own cleat, but the upside of that is that we can do our own thing. So really easy to uh, clip in and out. Um, so we've got the little uh, system here. So really nice clip in, and you can really feel it. It's got a really nice action, really solid. So you really know you're in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, three models. We've got the race, which is the lightest version. So that's kind of like your gravel bikes, your cross country, cyclocross. Um, the trail is probably our most popular one so far. We sold most of those. That's for kind of like your general purpose trail riding. And then the gravity, that's your sort of e bike and in, um, uh, downhill bikes. Um, so these have a little bit more of a platform. You've got a really nice kind of surface to kind of get your foot, uh, plenty of uh, contact there. So. Um, yeah, and as you say, available in lots of different colours, yeah. available through your local bike shop. So. Nice, and they share the same internals as your flat pedal, downhill pedals, don't they? So you've got all those big bearings on there, and you can upgrade the axle to a tie axle as well, can't you, on some of these yeah. to be super pimp, so saving the weight. But yeah, super pimp stuff, as always, from Hope. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you. Right, we're here at GT, one of the main sponsors here at the Malverns, and I've spotted this GT40, and it looks absolutely amazing. A custom paint job on this. What's the story, Clive? Oh, it's a good story with this one. Um, we were recently approached by the GT Global team about doing some special paint bikes for the Mirabor World Cup. Um, we use Fat Creations in the UK that do amazing paint jobs. Uh, the GT guys uh, asked us if Fat Creations could do uh, the frames for the team. So if you, uh, if you have a little look around the web for the World Cup uh, bikes from last weekend at Mirabor, you'll see them in this Team Scream livery. So this was basically one of the big colorways for uh, GT uh, back in the 90s. Um, you know, Team Scream was the colorway of the, the club they had and the jerseys and everything else. So if you're a GT fan, you'll know this paint job, um, especially the transition between the yellow and the blue. Um, so basically, Fat Creations did this as a bit of a tester before they did the team uh, bikes for the World Cup. Uh, the only difference really is that the graphics on here are red and on the team bikes for Mirabor, uh, the GT was in orange to match the Fox Forks because obviously Fox are the sponsor of the uh, GT factory racing team. So uh, that's the story behind it. So this is just basically left over from a bit of a practice run, but we thought it was too good to just leave around as a frame. So we built it into a bike for the Malvins uh, using some cool bits just to make it uh, be a bit of a showpiece. Nice, it's a great looking bike, Clive. And of course, these bikes are available in just what, normal colors, isn't it? I can't think of the colors off the top of my head. What have you got in stock uh, at the minute? Uh, bikes in stock. <laughs> <laughs> you, this is a funny guy. Um, I mean, everybody knows that there's massive shortages in the bike industry right now. Uh, GT is exactly the same as uh, as everybody else. In fact, we had quite a few bikes uh, on that ship stuck in the Suez Canal. Yeah, we had a lot of E Panteras on that uh, on that container ship. So um, uh, we've all been subject to the delays in the bike industry. But there are there are um, four C's out there. Go and see your local GT dealer, uh, and they should be able to get you some. Uh, and also, uh, you know, great value. The the E Force. If you look around in that category for a Shimano equipped bike. You know, it's a lot of bike for the cash. Yeah, what sort of cash are we talking for those base level uh, models? Oh, I don't know that. What you call yeah, me? To... Oh, like 3,000 and something. Like 3,000 and something. Nice, yeah, it does sound good value. And uh, as I say, this is an amazing looking bike. And thanks for, thanks for the chat today, Clive. Okay. 
Okay, thanks guys, cheers. Right, and that is it from the tech show here at the GT Malvins Classic. Great to catch up with you, Clive. Thanks for joining me. And if you've enjoyed today's video, get involved down in the comments. Let us know which bit of tech was your favorite. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we shall see you next month. Grace is there.